Well, greetings, viewers, voyeurs. It's been a while. It's got that funk here, obviously. Thank you for joining me. And I want to thank my friend Robert Wallace for making the video that I'm responding to, even though it was, uh, you know, highly disparaging of yours truly. Um, you know, uh, some of his comments were fair enough as far as I was concerned. Others are so far out of the ballpark that uh, there ain't even a ball. And I will get to that in due course. Um, so, first of all, the video was called Fake Americans. And although it wasn't directed solely at me, I was the primary uh, focus of the video. And it emanated from a conversation that Robert and I had on Twitter, uh, brief though it might have been. And uh, it was revolving um, my opinion that uh, the United States would benefit from better gun regulations. That, I don't think, should be really a controversial opinion. Uh, having said that, obviously it is uh, to some people, and Robert's one of those people. And Robert's got a right to his opinion uh, about guns, and I certainly don't disparage that. Um, myself, personally, I want to set the record straight about a few things that Robert said. Uh, you know, Robert said that I created some kind of a straw man uh, by saying that if someone feels that they need to be armed to be free, then they're not really free because they, by definition, are living in fear. He said that was a straw man. Well, I wasn't accusing that of being your position, Robert, or anyone else's position. That's my fucking position. It's no straw man. I'm telling you what I think. I think that if you think you have to be armed in order to be free, then you are not free. Because if you're not free from fear, you're not free. And if you're afraid, if you think you have to be prepared for lethal force, you're clearly afraid something bad might happen. There's no other explanation. So, that's my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Quite frankly, I don't care. But, it's, you know, that's where I'm coming from. It's not a straw man at all. But you straw man the fuck out of me. You say that I don't support the Second Amendment, that I want to, people to lose their rights and all this kind of bullshit. Or I defy you to point to a video where I've made such statements or a tweet for that matter where I've made such statements that people should lose their rights. Uh, I'm in favor of better gun regulations. That's not the same thing as losing the right to bear arms. And so that's like the ultimate straw man. I have made multiple videos on the subject of guns over the years, both on Dev Shell's Breakfast Club channel as well as my own Breakfast Club channel as well as this channel right here. Um, and so as not to like just link the videos and tell people to go spend another 15 minutes watching another video about guns. I'm just going to give you my brief fucking rundown right now. I support the Constitution and in the Constitution contains the Second Amendment, which I also support in principle. I think the right to self-defense uh, is sacrosanct and virtually uh, can't be argued against. That's my opinion. The right to bear arms, uh, in my opinion, shouldn't be considered absolute. And uh, like all freedoms, it has a certain level of restrictions that should be applied to it for the common safety of all people. And uh, I'll get more into that in a minute. You know, the, 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 the amendment itself starts off with the words, a well-regulated militia. So even the people who wrote the amendment knew that regulations were necessary uh, when dealing with this issue. I, I, I find it just an impossibly fucking disingenuous to suggest that no regulations is what they meant when they use the words well-regulated in the fucking amendment. It just doesn't make any sense, man. So there's that. Anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to say about it is I have been on video saying, in multiple videos on The Breakfast Club for sure, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is just my opinion. Obviously, it's not a fact. And if I was a believer in God, I would pray that we never have to find out if my opinion is correct or not, because it's my opinion that if any attempt was made by any political party or political person to forcibly disarm the United States population, and only 22 or 23 percent of Americans have guns, but if you tried to take those guns away from all 22 or 23 percent of them, you'd start a civil war. I just, that's just what I think would happen. I don't think it should happen. I think it would happen. Uh, I also don't think it should happen that the population should be asked to disarm. I don't think that's really necessary. I think that there should be a way forward. You know, from my point of view, if even if we could just find a way to stop people shooting themselves, we'd be making huge progress since more than 50% of people who die from a gunshot kill them fucking selves. So to me, that's a huge thing we need to, pro to, to solve. Uh, irrespective of what kind of regulations we put on actual firearms, weapons, uh, uh, materials, 
that kind of thing. Uh, it's a separate that to me, that's a separate issue, you know, but it's just as important to address as anything else. You know, if you don't address things like suicide prevention uh, in terms of the, how it relates to guns and gun ownership, we're not looking at the right in the right direction, because, like I say, more than half the people that die, die that way. Uh, anyway, getting back to what I was going to say. So I'm, I'm, I'm for better regulations on guns, and I don't think that's impossible. But I don't want to make this about guns to this video, because this video is really, Bob's video was more about me and his opinion about me being a fake American. And that's really what I wanted to focus on for this video. Now, you know, Bob is certainly entitled to his opinion, as are we all. And um, I don't disparage him for having one. And I don't necessarily uh, think he had no points to make. Um, some of the points he made were perfectly fair as far as I'm concerned. Most of them weren't. But the one that I particularly wanted to focus on to start off with is his accusation that I'm really smug and that sort of got under his skin. Well, if it got under your skin, um, you know, that's nothing I can really do about that. And it's an absolutely fair observation to consider me smug. I mean, I have made no secret of being smug for fuck's sake on my channel, you know. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Is that supposed to be news to me? Am I supposed to consider that an insult? I don't even know what to think about it. But from my point of view, you know, um, yeah, smug means that you have, you know, a lot of pride in your achievements. And, and you're damn right, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy most of the time. I live a pretty comfortable life. I work hard, I play hard, and I have a lot of really good friends. So I'm very lucky, I'm very privileged, I'm very fortunate, and I worked hard to get to where I am. Having said that, in a material sense, you know, I, I, I have practically nothing for someone in my demographic, you know, um, but I'm happy. I would be happier if I had someone to share my happiness with, but absent that, I'm still as happy as I can be. Most of the time, most days. So yeah, I'm smug because I am fucking happy and it wasn't easy getting here, but getting here has been, been an interesting journey. And I'm not gonna apologize for being happy. And I'm also not gonna apologize for loving other people, loving the world. You know, one of my greatest weaknesses as a human being is also my superpower. And that is the fact that, you know, I want to, by nature, I want to see the best in other people. I want to assume the best in other people. And, you know, this can make me a sucker sometimes. I absolutely admit that, you know, I'm, I, I have been played, you know, a few times because I'm open to it, you know, I, 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 but I would rather attend the inconveniences of being too nice than the inconveniences of being too cynical. To me, you know, it's, it's, it's a decision you make. And I made that decision when I was a little kid and I don't regret it. You know, like I say, that's led me on a, a happy life. You know, if I, if I counted up all the minutes that I've been radiantly happy and held them up against all the minutes I've been sad or angry. I mean, there's no comparison. It's not even close. So to me, that's an achievement. You know, to me, that's what life is about. You know, being happy, feeling good about yourself. You know, I, I, I find it interesting. The implication almost that you shouldn't feel good about yourself or that you shouldn't maybe, you know, be proud of yourself and proud of what you've achieved, you know, in terms of your own uh, well-being. I don't know, whatever. So if I'm smug about it, yeah, fine, whatever. If that's a character flaw, I can live with that. That's fine. Anyway, uh, now the whole fake American thing, um, you know, the Constitution is indeed something that I cherish. I think it's one of the most important documents that was ever written in English as its first language. And um, that being said, uh, I mean the whole Constitution. I don't just mean the Bill of Rights. I mean the whole Constitution. And the Constitution opens up, uh, you know, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Okay, that's one of the functions of government. Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. That's what government is supposed to be for. Establish justice, first out the gate, ensure domestic tranquility, second thing out of the gate. 
Those are the purposes of government as established in the Constitution. If the government is not making an effort to establish domestic tranquility, they are not doing what they're supposed to do. As an American citizen, which is enumerated in the 14th Amendment of my beloved Constitution, you know, all citizens born in the United States are citizens of the United States and the state in which they were born. I was born in Chicago, one of the most violent cities in America at the moment. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so I'm an American citizen. Now, the whole fake American thing that Bob was getting into, you know, he, he thinks that I lack integrity because I have not uh, become a British citizen, despite the fact that I live here for 30 years. Well, you know, I don't owe Bob or anybody an explanation for my personal choices. But, uh, you know, having said that, I am, I'm, if, if all I do is say, no, you're actually factually wrong about that, um, that's just not going to be good enough. So I will explain uh, in the sake of a full and frank discussion. Uh, there are several reasons why I retain my American citizenship. Uh, first of all, in order to become British, you have to swear allegiance to the Queen. I don't think there should be a Queen. If I was fucking born in this country, I would have the right to say, I can't swear allegiance to the Queen. I, I, I'm a Republican. I don't think there should, I think there should be a Republic. I don't think there should be a monarchy. If I was British born, I would have the right to do that. But to become British, you have to swear allegiance to the Queen. And I'm sorry, the only person I would ever make an oath to would be uh, my wife if I was ever to get married again, which is highly unlikely. Uh, but if I was, you know, that, that to me is, that's an oath that's worth making. That's an oath I can actually, I would want to make. How can you make an oath that you don't believe in? So that's one thing. There's another, there's many other reasons, and I'm going to list them all off just for the sake of being open and honest. Um, you know, my kids are here in the UK. They were born here. Neither one of them wants to live in America. I raise my children myself as a single parent. I'm exceptionally close to my kids for a father. Um, and I love it. It's one of the purposes of my entire existence is being dad. My kids are here. Why wouldn't I want to be here? You gotta be kidding. What? Having the right to walk around with a pistol is better than being near my children? Are you fucking nuts? That's just, that's bonkers, man. So there's that. The fact is, as well, and this is one of the main reasons I have not uh, really ever considered changing my citizenship. You know, my mom is elderly now. She's like 78 years old. And every single time I go back, I've been back four times in the past two years. And every single time I go back, she scares me about how this is going to be the last time we ever see each other and all that kind of stuff. And the fact is, the, the longer we go on, the more likely that is to be true. But, uh, you know, my mom's a fighter and, uh, you know, she's a sweet old lady, basically. And she really loves being alive. So, um, you know, she's hanging in there as far as I'm concerned. Good, right? Obviously. And the thing is, she does have a, a live-in, a fellow who lives with her who, they're, you know, they're not like a couple as such, but they do look after each other. And, um, you know... It's good to have someone uh, to be with so that you're not alone at the end of your life. However, if something happened to him, I would be the only one of my siblings willing to look after my mom. Even though they already live there, uh, it would be me that would have to fly back and look after my mother if she needed care. And I want to be able to do that if necessary because she's my mom. She's the only mom I'm ever going to get. And uh, if she needed me to look after her, I would. And if I'm not an American citizen, I would not necessarily have the right to go back and do that. Citizenship entitles me to come and go from America as often as I want. I don't have to worry about visas or how long I'm going to stay or how much money I've got when I go or any of that kind of crap. Uh, I can just come and go as I want to. That's an enormous privilege. And all by itself, uh, you know, irrespective of a you know elderly mom or whatever, all by itself, that's valuable. You know, the, the ability to come and go from America as much as I want. You know, I, I could exploit that if I wanted to, uh, in terms of uh, you know making a living. You know, uh, you know, if I needed to travel a lot, uh, my American passport is one of the biggest weapons I have in terms of my ability to sell myself. So there's that as well. Um, and the other thing is, it's sort of similar to the issue about uh, you know going back. 
to look after my mom. But as long as I retain my American citizenship, I have the right to live in America. I have the right to vote in America. Um, I don't have the right to vote here because I'm not a citizen here. Um, and the right to vote in America is important to me. What happens in America is important to me. Of course, I've got a right to an opinion about the United States, not just because I'm a citizen, but also because I'm a human being. And we are all connected to each other on this planet. Sorry if that sounds too airy-fairy and hippie for y'all, but it just happens to be my opinion, and I'm not going to apologize for it. You know, I am unrepentantly a people person. I want to believe the best in people. And, generally speaking, most people don't prove me wrong. Most people. So, yeah, like I say, I'd, I'd, I'd rather attend the inconveniences of being too nice than the inconveniences of being a grump. You know? So there's that. Um, so anyway, I, I hope I've explained, you know, you know, again, you know, if you want to judge me, uh, my integrity or lack thereof, you know, feel free. Uh, I've got a thousand videos on my channel. My head's wide open, you know, uh, so much of my personal life is on my channel compared to most people. Uh, you know, I talk about my own life and my own, the things I've done wrong, the things I've done to hurt people. I put myself right out there. I don't make any pretense at being some kind of, you know, angel or, or, you know, like the best person, you know, or any of that kind of crap. I don't give a fuck what people think. I know I've got loads of flaws, you know, love me despite them or hate me because of them. Either way, I'm cool. You know what I mean? It's a, to me, as long as the people I care about who know me the best love me, I'm winning and everyone else out there. Yeah. I hope people like me on the internet, but if they don't, that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't really encumber me. I'm not here to impress anybody. I'm here just to be myself. You know, I, I've never monetized this channel for similar reasons. You know, I, from my point of view, I want to make sure that if I make a video, it's because I want to, because I have something to say, et cetera, et cetera. Not because I think I might get some money for it or, or popularity or any of that kind of crap, you know? So there, um, now let me think. I know I'm missing some stuff from Bob's video still. I, I've, I've dealt with the whole uh, citizenship issue. I've dealt with the whole my opinion about the Second Amendment and why I'm not in favor of disarming the population. Um, so what else did he say about... Um, there's one more personal thing that he said, but I can't remember right the second what it was. Give me a second, I might have to edit. Um, what was it? It was toward the end. Oh yeah. I suppose I might have already touched on it, but you know, when when, when Bob says uh, you know, that, uh, you know, people are angry and they have a right to be angry because people want to take away their rights. You know, there are different uh, points of view when it comes to regulations on firearms. I'm not suggesting for one second that my point of view is the mainstream or even ought to be the mainstream point of view. It just happens to be my point of view, and I don't think I need to apologize for it. I certainly have a right to express it. That was it, the right to express it. So Bob goes on and on and on about how Mostly because I don't live there. Uh, I don't have a right to tell them how to, you know, Americans who live there, how to live. Well, in the sense that, uh, you know, I have the right to vote, you're absolutely wrong. I have the legal right to vote in the United States. You might not like that, but that's the law. So, yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do? Yeah, if I can chew on that. Anyway, um, so yeah, I have the right to vote, and because I have the right to vote, I certainly have the right to express my opinion, right? Um, I think anyone who's not from America has the right to express their opinions about America. Like I said, we're all on this planet together. You know, we all have opinions about what's going on in this planet. Uh, the lines that we draw, these countries, in most ways are arbitrary. It's only in terms of how, you know, we deal with certain laws uh, that they really affect us. And as regards to, oh, Bob seemed to take some umbrage to the idea that I like Britain better than the United States. And I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever said I like it better. There's certain things I like about this country better for sure. And there's certain things about this country that even after 30 years, frankly, are just bizarre to me. Like they pay you to have kids in this country. Like you could get a grant from the government if you have a baby. They, they pay you every week or once a month or whatever it was. I can't remember now, but I used to get it myself when I was raising my kids. You know, child benefit is what they call it. And the more kids you have, the more money you make. Wow. Uh, to me, that was just, that was, was just like, that's just an alien concept. 
Uh, so there's that. Um, also, weird things like, you know, you come to the UK, you have to have a license to have a TV set. That's just fundamentally weird to me. I, you know, therefore, I don't have a TV set because I'm not giving him 120 pounds a month or a year to watch some shit I don't really want to watch anyway. So if I want to watch something, I'll watch it on this thing. So, yeah, there's weird things about the UK. As far as the freedoms that uh, people have here, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make an argument in favor of uh, the wacky laws that the UK has in terms of freedom of speech. In terms of freedom of speech, you know, we have a lot of freedom of speech here, but not, not as much as you have in America. I'm not, I've never said otherwise. You know, um, for example, blasphemy is still illegal in this country. And I just find that bizarre. You know, um, that's just one example. Um, but there's others, you know, uh, Bob mentioned the guy with who trained his dog, how to do a Nazi salute or whatever. He got in some shit for that. You know, for me, that's over the top. And I, you know, I, I don't agree with that just because I live here. doesn't mean I agree with the things that happen here. That's, that's just a, a bizarre assumption, frankly. And to be blunt, Bob, I think you're smarter than that. I don't necessarily, I, I, I could not make up my mind whether you're trolling me or not with your video. I, I, I have no doubt that you had some fun making it. I certainly had fun watching it. And for that, I thank you. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I'm sure I'm missing something. And if I am, maybe we can talk about it in the comment section down below. I want to thank you all for hanging in there. This video has been almost as long as Bob's video was. Until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.